welcome. I'm going to be going through um, how to digitize your um, hand lettering or calligraphy. So prior to this point, um, I used just a basic calligraphy pen and nib, as well as some basic matte black ink, uh, which I will link to in the description. Um, and then I just used my iPhone and some good lighting um, to, to take the photo of what I'm going to digitize. So I'm digitizing for the purpose of an invitation. So, um, and a whole invitation suite. So this part of it is menu, um, the word menu. So the first thing I'm going to do besides, so I first import the photo that I took with my iPhone into Photoshop. Second thing I do is I, um, I make the lay a layer from the background so that I'm able to edit it completely. And then um, I go in and I edit the layer so I edit the levels. So you click on this right here and um, you edit the levels. So what levels does is changes the whites to be whiter and the blacks to be blacker. So if you start moving it over you'll see the whites getting whiter usually it's it kind of shows you where the white is and then if you go this way it shows the blacks getting blacker so if you see that now it's going to be easier it's definitely going to be easier to turn it into a vector once you're done with that um then you can go in so i know a lot of people have different processes for these but what i do is i take the regular eraser at a fairly big setting um, and um, I totally or I totally erase the background. So I'll erase all the background. Make sure it's good. Um, you can still see on it the um, texture of the paper. Um, and so once you do that, then you go in and go to your background eraser tool um, and you erase all of the color in the background. So um, sometimes you have to click and make sure it gets it. Um, you have to click in all the little nooks and crannies and make sure that everything is getting erased completely. And then you should have something that turns out like that. So once you do that, um, a lot of people after doing this and making it so they take it out, they'll turn it right into a vector. But to make the process a little bit easier on myself, I actually go in to the little spots that look not so great. For example, this corner, and I'll go in and I will kind of curve it, make sure all the blacks look good. Um, make sure all the lines look good, erase anything that needs to be erased. Um, like this is a little light, I'm going to turn that darker um, using the tool. This looks a little bit wonky, so I'm just going to go around and go like this. Um, I do that around the whole thing. So sometimes, um, especially on the thin lines, um, it gets really kind of bumpy. Um, so I'll do kind of a mixture of um, the paint brush and the eraser, and I'll just clean it up a little bit. This process is not 100% necessary, especially if your lettering isn't like mine and it is completely smooth. But if your lettering is like mine, this is going to make it just a tad bit easier um, when it comes to vectorizing your work. And especially some people don't even go and vectorize it. They'll take this if they're just having black ink and they'll put this, this as an image right onto um, whatever they're making. But the reason why I turn it into a vector is because then it makes it nice and easy to put it on different sized papers because then it won't get blurry. Um, and uh, I'm able to easily change the colors, which is important to me. Um, especially in the invitation process, um, I like to be able to change the colors because not everyone is going to want their name in exact black. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to finish this and then um, I'll meet back up with you when I get it in Illustrator. So 
So um, now that you're done in Photoshop, um, the next step is to drag your image. So I just went straight from, I dragged it straight from Photoshop into Illustrator. And Illustrator is the program that you're going to need to use in order to vectorize. So once you get your Photoshop document into Illustrator, um, the next step is that, is that you're going to need to image trace it. So when you import it, it's an image. Um, when it comes from Photoshop, it's an image. So um, the step is to image trace. So I, when I'm doing this kind of thing, I use black and white logo. I find that it's the easiest because um, it'll just be black and white when it's done. So once I click that, you can see that it has changed and outlined it. Um, and then you use the image trace options and it's up to you how how you want to do it but so sometimes I'll zoom in and see and I'll change some of these um, here to see kind of what it does to it and change the paths usually that's the other one that I try to look at and see if it fixes it once you get to a certain point though it starts it starts doing too much to it and really changing the look. So you want to find that perfect balance between, so I think that's probably good. Um, the corners changes um, all the edges. So that one doesn't do as much and neither does noise. And then the last thing I do is um, I click ignore white. And so that will take it, take all of the white background and erase it. So now that you have that, now you can, if it, as long as it's selected, which it is, you can click expand. And what expand does is it actually vectorizes it. So what it does is it puts anchor points in all the places that it finds, um, all the curves and everything. Um, I delete the background because then you just get um, this selected and that's it um, rather than the whole square and then you know some people this is it, it is a vector and it's done so some people will just consider it to be done completely but what I think is that a lot of times when it does the image trace it really does kind of a poor job of getting exactly what it needs to um, and it puts a lot of anchor points in there and I think I'm a big um, believer that the less anchor points the better though because um, that's usually when it looks smoother though I still wanted to have a little bit of character so what I do is what I'm what I end up doing is smoothing out places that just look really rough um, the best way to find those places is to look at it and if you can see like right here it's obvious that there's anchor points right there because it pulls this spot out. Same with here. There's, um, it's got a pointy edge um, and that's not natural when it comes to calligraphy. So what I do is I click on one anchor point with um, the direct selection tool and you know I edit it slightly so then it gives it more of a rounded look. So that's what it ends up looking like. And then for here, then you just start, you end up wanting to just delete anchor points. So sometimes when you start deleting them, it brings the line out. But then you can take where the top anchor point is, or the side, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. You can stretch it and move it around until it gets more of a straight look. So I think the rest of it looks pretty good. So we're going to keep going down along the lines and see. So if I zoom out a little bit. What you can see is that this line here, um, the part of the M, the first part of the M, it gets really skinny in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete some of these anchor points, which is going to pull out and straighten from the top to the bottom. So the bottom looks still a little bit skinny, so I'm just going to keep going with that, keep deleting the anchor points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top anchor point and I'm going to make sure that this kind of rounds out a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural. So I'm going to do that to both of them. 
and then you get down to this bottom that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of edit it to make sure that it looks a little bit more natural. Um, so I'll take this and, you know, drag it. And basically what you want to do when you're dragging your handles, they're called handles with the anchor point, um, you want the, the line that shows where it's going to match up with the next anchor point. So you want it to be a smooth transition. And so if you do that, then it's more of a smooth transition. You can't see where each anchor point is. And that's the goal of anchor points, is to not be able to see where they actually are. Um, and then this, I think, it looks a little bit skinny here. So I'm going to move that out. I'm going to remove these anchor points here. And then I'm going to just smooth it out to make sure that it kind of all flows together. Um, some of this, you know, where it, where it dips, um, I find to be okay. It gives it just that little bit of character that I'm looking at or looking for. But this right here where it dips in, I think that's a little bit too much. So, so I take that out and then it looks more smooth. Um, again here, uh, it looks a little bit dipped in, so I'm going to just remove it. I spend a lot of time making sure that every anchor point looks and looks natural and looks good. And I know that a lot of people don't do that and a lot of people don't feel the need to do that, but I am very specific. Um, I know that, you know, if you really want your, your lettering to look completely authentic, um, there's ways to do that in, um, in this, in the image trace when you do that, that portion. Moving some of these will, will make it look just a little bit more um, authentic, but you're still, when you vectorize, you're still going to get all these bumps. If you like the way that looks, then by all means, um, you don't have to do all this. But if you're like me and you kind of want your, your lettering to be, a, be smoother, then that's when you would follow these, um, these instructions. So, um, but I would love to know if you're following this and you think that that this is just way too much and you have a easier solution for me or anything, I love to hear those. Unfortunately, this is the way that I was taught or that I learned. I am self-taught for the most part. I learned a little bit about um, the Adobe products in high school in a class, but we only had a certain amount of time on each one. So a lot of what I'm doing, it was actually um, me being interested in um, exactly, or in, in this, especially in Illustrator, and teaching myself some of the, um, the process. So that's kind of why I, I'm kind of set in my ways because I've done it for a long time. But I also love learning new things. Uh, lately I've had a lot more, um, uh, I've had to use uh, Photoshop a lot more just with my, uh, my Instagram and my blog. And um, it's been really fun for me to relearn Instagram or it relearn Photoshop because, you know, Photoshop is really fun. But I use Illustrator the most just because I do invitations and things that have, te have type. And if you are unfamiliar with kind of the differences, um, Photoshop is all about images. It's image-based. Um, everything is about images. But, um, and it's not something that you want to use... Um, a use type with. You really don't want to ever put type in Illustrator and or in Photoshop unless that's your only option. So unless you only have Photoshop. But if you're doing any sort of um, invitation design or um, business card or anything like that, you're going to want Illustrator because that's where you really get the freedom of using text and making text look good because once you put it in Photoshop, it um, rasterizes, I think that's how you say it, um, 
it rasterizes the way that or it, it into an image so when you try to expand it or make it bigger it's going to end up being really blurry and no one wants that so that's kind of my little spiel about you know using photoshop versus using illustrator um obviously yes there is indesign as well indesign um just to kind of give you an overview indesign is basically um for doing layouts so say like a newsletter or magazine layout or something like that um i've used it for pdf documents um you know it's for very specific things but most of the time i can get away with using illustrator for almost everything and that's usually what i do so um, just because I really enjoy, I, I like Illustrator the best. I find it the easiest to use. And that might just be because, you know, I, that's what I've always used. Um, but the best, because that's what, you know, I find myself using the most or need to use the most. But I'd love to hear any, um, anything about what you use the most. And... Yeah, so I'm going to stop rambling about Photoshop versus Illustrator versus InDesign, and I'm going to finish this up. I'll meet you back at the end once I'm done. So when you're done going through the all the letters, you can kind of look at your whole your piece as a whole to see, you know, if it is exactly how you want it. If it is, then you have your perfect vector. And you can go ahead and you can, um, you can change the color, um, anyway, let's see. Change it to red. Oh wait, no, that's the stroke. But say you want to change it to red, um, I'm gonna change it to purple yellow, green, you can change it to whatever you want. And that's, you know, the vectorizing process.